Best of R slash malicious compliance episode 113. Subscribe for Reddit videos daily. In school there is a block before lunch called D. E. A. R. The block is 20 minutes and you sit and read or you do homework. It is very boring. When kids get bored, they talk. When you would talk you would get yelled at. The only noise you could make was coughing and sneezing and stuff. Time for the malicious compliance. One kid, not gonna lie and take credit for it, decided it would be a good idea for everyone, 150-200 kids, to cough at the same time. We decided 1 o'clock was perfect. Once the time came, it sounded like a bomb went off. We did end up getting in trouble and were forced to sit with our homerooms for lunch but it was very worth it. Thank you. Next. Also posted on r slash revenge. So thanks to shutdowns, the daycare I work at finally recently obtained a loan and was able to bring back the employees they furloughed. I wasn't really happy with how they chose to lay everyone off since they just stopped talking to us after informing us they had no hours and no idea if we'd even have a job later. Then management got an attitude when I said I'd have to adjust my hours due to the new job I had to obtain to pay bills. I work in the kitchen at this daycare. Rolled up for my first day back and started my usual tasks. As I'm loading dishes in the dishwasher, one of the assistant managers, who hates me, walks by with an evil smile and informs me due to budget cuts we'll be hand washing everything from now on. Side note, how is that more cost effective since it uses a ton of hot running water and dish soap? Also, it's not as sanitary, and that's kind of important. I ask her if I bring dishwasher pods, may I use the dishwasher again? She says yes. So I go to Target and buy some. Two months supply for like $18. Perfect. Makes my life so much easier. Now being the petty individual I am, I decide that only I get to use those pods. I'm not there a couple days a week thanks to working elsewhere. The assistant manager does kitchen duty when I'm not around. So each day, I've been bringing in one pod only for my load of dishes. Days I'm not there. Well... That's not my problem. She did say, if I brought the pods, I could use the dishwasher. Thank you. Next. I should open this with that in 99% of the time I do not condone hitting a woman. Sorry for any grammatical errors I'm on a phone. I had attended a prestigious airline school that promised a 9-12 month graduation period as per their advertising. However during my schooling there I was confronted with a Karen who was a glorified secretary with a dress code hard on. Full disclosure I am 50% Norwegian with 16% Native American and the rest is mumbo jumbo random. The resulting effects is a very dark facial hair that grows very fast. Part of the contract of the airline school was a clean shaven face. From my reading of the contract it was a clean shaven face upon the arrival of the school. For 8 months I was subject to shaving 3-5 times a day upon the Karen's choice and how many times I ran across her during the day. Enough of the backstory sorry for the long bit there. Late into my enrollment we finally came into a cross, where I had had enough. I was told to either do something about my facial hair growing so fast or to leave as Karen had had enough of telling me to shave. I kept a shaving kit in the bathroom of our facility to shave throughout the day. I probably less than kindly informed her that her targeting of my fast facial hair growth fell under sexual harassment by my state's laws. As soon as those words left my mouth I was met with a right hand slap to my face. Fear not there was a second hesitation. A second only though. My body took over and I threw a right hook back which unfortunately resulted in a knockout and her head hitting the pavement hard. I called 911 with police to watch the video footage and an ambulance for medical care. I wasn't charged with anything in the end thank fuck. She was given assault. Thank you. Next. While apprenticing as a welder slash industrial mechanic I've fallen for a few tricks but not many. This one journeyman would always send me for the dumbest shit but I'd walk around the shop anyway because it was a good way to take a break. One time though he sent me for a sky hook no matter the cost. He said. And I believed him. Everyone laughed and laughed. Until I found a sky hook. It was about $2,000 deposit for the equipment to be delivered and came with an operator and if you kept him longer than the price would go up or whatever. Sure thing. Bring it in. I went back to the journeyman and told him the skyhook was outside he went out and sure as shit there was a massive fuck off crane with the words skyhook on the side. He never messed with me after that. Thank you. Next. 
In my teens I dropped out of school to go work with my dad who was the foreman of a masonry crew. We had some great times which I wouldn't trade for anything. I was a mortar man. My responsibilities were to start making mud in the morning, supply it to the masons, then clean up the mixer at the end of the day. As mortar man I had to start before anyone else, and end after everyone was done. This is only about 15 minutes before work and 15 minutes after work. I was always paid a half hour for my extra work so things were fine. A few years later my dad became a building inspector and I had moved with my crew to different companies. It wasn't uncommon for us to move to a different masonry company every year and we would try to always get as many of us on the same crew as possible. One company didn't care if I worked the half hour each day and I guess just assumed I liked to do it for free. I had told the head boss that I needed to get paid for that extra time. He just told me I needed to figure out how to finish when everyone else finished. In my head I was like okay I'll do that the next day as it was time to stop working I made a full batch of mortar in the mixer. This was the large 3 bag mixers, not those ones you get at Home Depot, and walked away. Regardless of me making the full batch the mixer was generally half full at the end of the day which I would fill gout cells on my own time. It was a Friday so the mortar had plenty of time to set. At some point in the weekend the mixer was discovered and all hell broke loose. Not only was the mortar mixer ruined but someone at the yard though it was possible to try and turn the paddles by putting it in gear. This instantly sheared the main pin. Here is a part that is sad and make me regret my teenager whole actions. For god knows why the yard guy put his finger in the pinhole and it sheared his finger clean off. I truly regret that, and in all my years of masonry never did I think someone would put a finger in the main pinhole. I was called by my foreman, who was part of my crew for years and he told me the owner wanted to fire me but my crew said if I was fired they all walked. My dad being the guy that inspected most of our work helped. I worked for this company a little longer until my crew moved on to create their own masonry company. No one from the old company ever confronted me about about this which did make sense as they knew I was pissed off about my pay and fist fights are not uncommon in the masonry world. And not to brag but I was in silly good shape. It was nice when you could warn someone not to f with you, not to avoid a fight but because you didn't want to give them PTSD from bashing in their face. Thank you, next. This happened a long time ago in the early 90s, before laptops were feasible. We did have a home computer that I used to write school papers on, and a home printer. I was one of a few students privileged enough to not have to write papers by hand and most teachers let me because my handwriting was hard to decipher. My history teacher didn't like it, but accepted it. He didn't much like me, nor I him. My dad was pretty well educated and spent a lot of time teaching me a different perspective than what was in the curriculum at the time, which I happily shared with the class at will. So our relationship wasn't very good, let's say. One time the deadline for a paper drew close, but our home computer was sent in for repair, so I asked my history teacher for a stay on the deadline for this paper. Apparently I caught him on a bad day. He said something to the effect of I don't care. Write it by hand then. Just write it out and get it to me before the end of day tomorrow. No excuses. QMC. As a lark me and my cousin had learned to write mirrored slash inverted writing a few years earlier. So I sat down and wrote 8 pages with barely legible mirrored slash inverted handwriting. I wrote as small letters as I could and chose paper without any imprinted lines. I spent almost 12 hours writing it like that. I even got my dad to help me out with the subject matter so that it was very sound. I didn't say anything when he collected our papers, but I noticed a smirk as he saw that I had had to write it out. The smirk faded as he realized he now had to decipher inverted bad handwriting. I just smiled and left. Next week he handed out our papers and he had failed me. I told my dad who promptly called my teacher and asked why he had failed me. The teacher said it was illegible and I was thus failed. My dad then asked if my teacher had specified legibility or if he had used the words I don't care. Write it by hand then. Just write it out and get it to me before the end of day tomorrow. No excuses. Then I merely say the same to you. I don't care. You asked for a handwritten paper, and that is exactly what you got. Now you get to grade it. No excuses. My dad said. I got the pleasure of handing my paper back to my teacher and watch him struggle with it for a while during class. A week later I got it back, with top grade. 
he didn't say anything as he handed it to me, but I couldn't help myself, you do realize that it would help if you read it through a mirror, right? I asked brightly, the immediate redness in his face told me he hadn't figured that one out, he had struggled with my inverted writing all the way through, I still cherish the look on his face to this day, edit, as stated this was in the early 90s, and many of you have assumed it to be placed in the USA. It happened in Northern Europe and I understand that a few cultural misunderstandings may have occurred. I have never tried to present this as flattering to me or my dad. I can easily see that this constitutes our sole behavior from an entitled and privileged child. My dad was never part of a group that hired teachers. He was well known in our city however and people listened to him, but he had no oversight on the hiring or firing of teaching staff. Some of you say the teacher shouldn't have given in. I say otherwise. He had claimed many times that the subject matter was way more important than form or formatting of any paper, and while I disagreed with him on many points when it comes to historical perspectives and pedagogic methods used, he was a man of integrity who gave me a fair grade for the content of the paper after he had bothered to make an effort to read it, and to the user who wondered about the non-curriculum perspectives of my father. This was mostly about the fallout after the end of the German occupation in World War II. The official line in our curriculum has later been proven misleading and lacking. These last 10 years or so has seen several changes in the curriculum reflecting a more nuanced approach to the resistance work, their recognition after the war and the courts convicting traitors and enablers of the occupying forces. A friend of mine now works as a teacher at the same school and he tells me I wasn't the first, nor the last to have done this or similar things. They have a file with copies of papers that have unusual solutions to common themes. Mine is probably still in there somewhere. Obnoxious kids these days tend to write things using a different alphabet transcribing the whole paper in a Cyrillic, Arabic, Vietnamese or Greek letters according to him. The most obnoxious kid the last few years was one who had written a complete paper, changed the font to weddings and printed it out. Of course they insisted on getting the word file and could easily change the font back again. Thank you. Next. Backstory. I am a worker in the US and I was going up to Canada to go to a family reunion. It was a 49 hour drive. My wife was there for work. People in the story me. OP wife. Wife. Rude. Auto body workers. Kenny's their manager. Hulk the judge judge so as I was driving there we crossed the border of Canada. After a hour I fucked up the tire and had to go to the closest shop. I was at the shop I explained what happens to the Kennys the conversation went like this. OP I have to get to a family reunion in a couple of hours will it be fixed in time? Kennys yeah sure that won't be a problem they get to work they replace the tire it was a little deflated so they aired it up. Mind you that I would have done it myself if I had my tools. I call my wife and tell her I'm going to be a little late. I watch the Kennys and they are about to overinflate it. OP Kenny's y'all are over inflating it Kenny's mind your business we know what we're doing one of them went to go get their manager. This guy was a huge guy he looked like he was a professional bodybuilder. Hulk can you please leave my workers alone they are doing their job I back off and watch from afar. As I suspected the tire exploded. Kenny's walk up and tell me what happened OP the wheel messed up and messed up your axle I call my wife and tell her I'm going to be really late I explain to her what happened. Hulk we're gonna sue you for hurting one of the workers. If you had not intervened it would not have happened I said okay. A few weeks later I get report of the court date. What happened in court? Judge so you are suing OP for hurting one of your workers. Hulk said yes judge said and he tried to stop the Kennys from ruining the car. I counter sued for the damages to my car. The judge ordered quickly and I won and had a freshly fixed car my malicious compliance story.